Mm-hmm. It was surrounded by national park and state forest with a few scattered farms. The day I saw it was I had moved out of the place and we'd lived there, God, how many years? I can't mm. remember, but we're out there for a long time. Talk me through what happened and what you saw. So I leave the house, walked down to the river flats of the Yarra River, crossed over it, walked up the other side to a ridge where there's a fire trail. And what I did was on the other side of the road there were, it was quite sort of scrubby bush and then you walked into the forest. So I, I picked a wombat trail, which was easy because they usually go down the other side to the river, the Queen's Pound. So I walked down there, I stayed a while at the, at the Queen's Pound River and then turned around and started sort of making my way up and I thought I found the same wombat trail I was uh, come down on So because I'm going in between trees and bush and that and I come up to the top of the ridge and I was looking at the wombat trail and I was following it and as I was looking down at it, I, I followed it along and the head come up and there was the owie standing there and he was looking down at his feet. I imagine he could, I don't know, I just assumed that maybe he could smell or see my footprints um, on the wombat track. And a split second later he looked up and saw me and he took one jump and jumped behind a tree. And then he peered around the tree at me, and by that stage I was about to turn and run, which I did, because all the hairs on the back of my neck were standing up, and um, he took off. He took off so fast down the side, down to the um, Queenstown River, and that was it, and I turned and ran. I ran for about 50 metres, and I thought, what am I running for? He's already gone, you know? I saw him for probably two or three seconds when he was looking down at the ground. He hadn't noticed me first, and then when he put his head up and saw me, he jumped behind the tree. He was there for probably two or three seconds and then looked around the tree at me, just his head poked around. And then probably two seconds later, he was off down the side of the hill, down to the Queenstown River, and um, I turned and ran. Can you describe it from top to bottom in as much detail as you can? It was easy over six foot, but easy over six feet. And he, he was really dark with tinges of dark brown, not jet black, but very, very almost black from head to toe. He had no neck, and he was hairy all over, but he was so agile, I couldn't believe how quickly he moved, you know. That's what I saw, the height, the size, the hairiness and the colour, and that's when he jumped behind the tree. Where he jumped, some access was down to the Queenstown River, and there was regrowth, very fine bushes, very thin stems, Mm. and I could see him in between as he took off. I could see the sea move down through the trees and he was just incredibly fast. Was the hair on it short like a dog or long like a goat? Or... Long, long. Uh, was it neat fur or untidy? Uh, a little bit scruffy, yeah. The hair everywhere on this thing? Yeah, as far as I could tell, I mm. probably shorter on the face. Was it a lean thing or a solid looking thing? Oh, solid. He yeah. was a big boy, yeah. <laughs> sort of muscly or toned or? And muscle, oh, muscly, definitely, yeah. You said yeah. this thing was particularly fast. For its size. I imagine someone that size would, would lumber, you know what I mean? But he took off, he was incredibly agile because he was just gone down the hill, yeah. Were the proportions similar to a person's? His arms were longer in proportion to his body, you know, a human body. His arms were longer. Did you ever talk to anyone else about this encounter? Yeah. What sort of reactions did you get? With the local sort of farmers, they just a couple of them just said no. But there was one particular man, he's probably passed away now. He used to go out and he had like heavy um, equipment, making dams or fixing roads and that. And apparently he was out past Yarra, he goes right out into this incredible national park and his son was with him and his son come up to him because I think he was sitting having lunch or doing something and said, oh, Dad, there was a big hairy man there and he just ran off. So oh, you got the feeling they were out there. They're out there. Mm. They're definitely around there. Yeah. Very isolated area, I must say, because we didn't have electricity. We had generator and solar. So where we were, it was very, very isolated. Was there ever anything else unusual on the property at the, that you came across or experienced there? Oh, my God, yeah, the whole time we were there, yeah. Yep. Tell, tell me about that. What sort of other unusual things? Um, our neighbour was across um, the other side of the river, um, on the other side of Queenstown. He was South African. He was shooting birds 
because they were getting into his worm heap and he heard a noise one night and he went out there with a torch and a gun and um, he saw this animal, right? And when he described it, we showed him a photo of a Tasmanian tiger and he said that's what it was. Another bloke who I think Grego, I think he's still out there. He's just before um, Russell Creek. Uh, he also saw one run across the road. Um, we were coming home one day on the main road down into Yarry, um, Burke's Road it's called, and at the front of this farm there was a fallen log, a big log, and on it was a big black cat. Yeah, it looked at us and we drove past and I said to my ex, did you see that? He goes, yep. I said, do you want to go back and have a look? And he said, nope. We kept going. The main thing that happened out there was UFOs, heaps of them. Oh, my God, I just, yeah.